Did you know that you can stream the best of HBO shows and more with the new Astro? Better than before, no rain interruptions, no repeats, just stream anytime and on demand via the Astro Ultrabox. It starts from only RM5990 a month and you can find out more information at astro.com.my. You're listening to The Goggler Podcast with me, Uma, and joining me on the show today is Tammy Riker. She is the award-winning cinematographer of The Old Guard and One Night in Miami, and she's here today to talk to me about her work on Apple TV Plus's The Morning Show. Hey, Tammy, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. My name is Uma. I'm dialing in from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Thank you so much for doing this. So we are three seasons into The Morning Show, and... The series has something of an established look and style. And I was curious, as a DOP, whether you still get the chance to play. Oh, absolutely, yes. I would say definitely each director brings their own style as to how the camera's going to move and framing and the style of each, you know. So that's where you really get to play. The sets are you know they're pretty much lit we're coming in and and turning it from day to night or dusk and in all that is on the dimmer board and so i'm just working with the gaffer setting our levels and then lighting faces but definitely when we're on location and like episode five for example that's my favorite that was with the director stacy passion we you know, we really got to decide how we we're going to shoot the insurrection, you know, what style it was, how it handheld, like in this very glossy show, we decided to go very gritty in that moment. I take it when you get to go outside, it's the most fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I mean, I say that, but yet again, a lot of the series does involve people talking in rooms and it's your challenge, I suppose, to making that look dynamic and exciting and given what you pulled off magnificently in one night in Miami I figure you're the person they go to right (laughs) yeah I'm like oh boy okay we're back in Corey's office okay how can we do this different (laughs) so what is the secret to that I remember reading an interview and you spoke about the Alexa 65 and you got to play with a lot of cool things when making Miami but Is it the same? Like, do you get to do cool stuff like that on a TV show? Not quite the same because you're moving faster. You do fewer takes. And what was fun on this was we had three cameras all the time. Now, a lot of people would be like, oh, how do you like for three cameras? But what was really fun is the third camera could really do interesting shots, you know, because you were covered. You had your, your other two getting the scene and some of my favorite shots were always from the third camera you know they just more abstract yeah I'm always wondering what's on the DOP's mood board when they go into something like this because obviously you're working with different directors each one having a different style and I'm curious if you have certain points of reference that you always go back to I I, I think a lot about when I when I watch the morning show I think a lot about Salkin's work for example because it's all very chatty and wordy and it requires cinematography so it doesn't feel too theatrical yes yes so you keep it so it doesn't turn into talking heads yeah (laughs) right so what's on your mood board well I would say for the morning show it was definitely to keep the camera alive and moving you know that would be the trickiest part because sometimes there was so much dialogue in the scene and they're sort of standing face to space so that was uh, definitely always a challenge how to keep that interesting Are there certain tropes or tricks that we don't necessarily notice? I think the things the audience notices are when cameras start spinning around the room um, (laughs) to keep a scene dynamic when people are face to face with each other. But I was wondering, what are the kind of tropes and tricks that you try and avoid? Well, that would be one of them. I, I think on this, what we got to have the advantage of having three cameras all the time is the third one always would do a profile. And I really liked that in the cutting to, you know, instead of just being over, 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 you know, you would cut to these profiles that were usually very tight sometimes and interesting. Yeah. And do you get a chance to be involved in that editing process as well? No. You don't see, you're moving very quickly. They're being cut. I mean, I was lucky to have a 
repeat director, Stacey Passion did five and nine. So when we were doing nine, she let us see a little, she was just getting it herself for the first time. She let us see a few scenes, but otherwise you don't. You get to see it when you're sent a link to do the color timing. It's very rare that we get to speak to DOPs and uh, production designers. And so this is very exciting because I think it gives myself and the audience, I guess, a little bit more insight on how it all works. And your work has been so varied from Pieces of April to The Old God to One Night in Miami to The Morning Show. And I'm curious about your sense of style and whether you enjoy that sort of diversity of work. Right. Oh, I love that diversity of work because each one is so different and brings so different. Such a different <laughs> challenge. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like the fighting in the old guard. I had never done fighting like that. And that was really in with Gina Prince Brythewood and keeping it all handheld on the Alexa 65 again. And that that was a big challenge. And, and working in London was, you know, amazing and all over the world for that. You bring your own style, but you adapt it to each challenge forgive me if this is a silly question because so much of television these days feels very cinematic but i'm wondering whether there is much of a difference when you're shooting for a two-hour movie or a tv series or have those lines kind of blurred these days well no it still feels really different when you're shooting a film why so well i i i would say the 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 time constraints are different you know when you're when you have 10 days or nine days on episodic it, it's you're just on a film you have you know three or four months so you can keep switching things around and go back well we're going to put this first and you know okay we're going to go to Morocco first and now you know so it, there's just a lot more room to play with and of course I'm assuming it's generally quite rare for one DOP to do all say 12 episodes or 10 episodes of a show in episodic yes i mean some there are some shows and they're amazing and you can really see it i mean it must be exhausting but (laughs) you usually see that when it's the same director also if you have the same director throughout but here you're prepping with your director so you're you know you're you're shooting for two weeks and then you're prepping for two weeks now on the morning show a big challenge and which was fun and very interesting is we were switching episodes constantly so that three and four and five might be shooting at the same time. So you would come in and oh, shoot wow. a few days and then go back to prep and because of talent availability. So I didn't mind that at all. It was interesting. Usually you're, you're, you're shooting your episode, you shoot for two weeks, you're off, you know, you're prepping for two weeks. It's very orderly in that way. And this, we had to jump around a lot. And is there a lot of communication between the various DOPs. I was wondering if you were trying to maintain a sense of thematic style. Yes, yes. So you talk to the other DP, especially when you're on the stage, you see each other a lot and run, and you're having the same gaffer, the same crew. So, and you're able to see the dailies, what they're doing, and they see what you're doing. But if you're lucky enough to be shooting an insurrection, for example, then you get the chance to experiment a little or does the time constraint prevent that kind of experimentation as well? Well, I would say that that the morning show was, Mimi was very open to, you know, if you wanted to use, you know, we use swing and shift lenses in one of our episodes, you know, to trying different things. I mean, you couldn't completely change the look, but you could for certain episodes, especially if it was some kind of memory or flashback, you know, that's when you could... I mean, the one thing that made me had to look fantastic. That was just the, (laughs) that was the mantra. (laughs) No, and and, and I think it does, right? I think the the thing that always stands out with actually a lot of the Apple TV Plus productions is that every episode has a sense of scale and scope. And, And I think even with the morning show, like you said, it's two people talking in a room, but it feels important. Yes. And I think a lot of that boils down to what you do. Subconsciously, the audience picks up on that. They may not know what lens you're using, but they can feel it. Right, right. They feel well. They they feel the power of the movie star. They feel the power. Yeah. <laughs> 
and the set design no. are so big and fantastic and yeah what is next on your plate after this? Are you allowed to tell me if you're working on movies? Everything's on hold right now because of the strikes. Oh, yes, of course, because of the strikes. Yeah, so I've just... Which is why I get to speak to you, which is quite Exactly. Cool. <laughs> I've just been doing commercials all summer. So it's a different contract. So the SAG right. strike didn't affect commercials. Very cool. Very cool. No, this has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you because I've been a big fan of your work. And admittedly... I didn't realize how much of a fan of your work I was until I went back and looked at your entire filmography. And I was like, oh my God, you did that too. <laughs> so it turns Hi. out I've always been a fan of your work. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. This has been an absolute pleasure. Okay, great. Have a great day. I've been speaking to Tammy Riker. She served as one of the DOPs on The Morning Show. Season three is now streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. Check it out. Let us know what you think. You know how to reach out. Goggler MY, all of our social media feeds. You can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us a WhatsApp on the Goggler hotline 012-524-5208. Don't forget, if you drop us a line on any one of those channels, we'll send you a link to join our brand new Discord server where you can chat with us in real time. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Goggler Podcast.